All right, here we go. Hello, and welcome to Accidental Origin, your weekly writing web show. My name is Brendan. This is my show. I can take these off and no longer listen to music. Um, yeah, hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? How's it going? What's new? What's going on? That was, uh, for those interested, that was my friend Stefan's band, Trunk. They're pretty cool. They do cool things. Yeah. Um, yeah, so sorry about the delays. Uh, I queued up a bunch of YouTube uploads this morning and they didn't finish in time, so I was getting some frame drops and stuff, so I decided it would be best just to let it kind of play itself out. We got all that done. It's good to go off my plates. Frames are good now. There shouldn't be any more drops. Because uh, my connection is really stable in general. Just because I had some stuff uploading. Um, yeah. Don't think there's anything else new uh, since yesterday. Uh, yeah. I don't know. That's all I got. <laughs> That's all I got. So, what do we want to do today? I'll flip over to my main screen here. Uh, I kind of thought I would work on some more dialogue stuff, though uh, if someone else has something more interesting, I'm certainly willing to give it a shot. What's the daily prompt for today, Sam? <laughs> seriousness seriousness I'm so serious all the time super serial Um, yeah, I could do something with that, probably. Uh, I'll write it down. I'll write it down. lunch just before streaming and now I feel like I need a nap. It's a good day. It's a good day. Seriousness. Okay. Well, I think what I could do is I could do uh, a dialogue exercise using um, seriousness. could be a thing. How do I not have just a third prompt open? There you are.
We should spend our three hours obsessing over meaningless NPC logistics. Yes, we should, because uh, that is a thing that we should do. <laughs> Gotta love NPC logistics. jump right into the action. Do something similar to what I did yesterday. Spell dang nabbit. Good call. Now I gotta look it up. Yeah, no, no, I got it, yeah. Who was Deputy Dog? <laughs> <coughs> Who was Deputy Dog? I, I gotta know. Look at this animation. Terry Tunes. I've never heard of this. Though that sheriff looks familiar to me. was the professional animation debut of Ralph Bakshi. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Can you imagine starting as uh Let's go with this one. You you start your career drawing this. And then you end your career drawing this. <laughs> oh, that's a great one too. And if you haven't seen Wizards, you should. It's really, really good. Interesting. Mental note to uh, to check that out later. I'm gonna save that for me. So we're good. 
Dang nabbit. too serial for this. Hey Sam, can you find me a link for that uh, come on names thing? I want to look at the rules on that. For those who don't know, I am pretty decent at grammar. Uh, except for commas. I am useless at commas in any shape or form. I am terrible at using them. Uh, and I do not use them correctly ever. Or nearly, nearly ever. That's how that goes. Well, I'm trying to work on characters through dialogue, right? <laughs> also, I find you supremely easy to quote.
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. We're good.
let's uh, duplicate this. What we want to do is we want to uh, we want to rewrite this and just add a bunch of stuff. We want to clean it up. We want to add actions and characters and stuff like that. Do something a little different. <laughs> Is this the first time you could actually say that? Not sarcastically? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> Did I get it accurate enough, Sam? His talk is not ridiculous. <laughs> That's pretty much exactly what happened. It was accurate. Oh, by the way, how happy are you about uh, the Crusader Kings uh, <laughs> anniversary thing going on? Oh, you didn't see that? On the uh, Paradox Interactive channel. <laughs> it's like the five year anniversary or something like that. I've seen it on before. They don't stream a ton, I don't think. I think they just do like special events and stuff. Oh, they're done. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, they're, um, they stream in the afternoons, but Central Eastern time, like CET, which is uh, about five hours ahead of us, I think, or is it six? It might be six. Yeah, GMT would be five, so it'd be six. Oh, really? Because they were streaming earlier when, um... Like, I saw them when I came on to Twitch this morning. Mine says, uh, mine says they were on for two hours, 14 minutes.
<laughs> okay. That being said, you should follow them because I know how much you love Paradox <laughs> and all that they do. Oh, also, uh, by the way, I finished Max Payne 1 yesterday. <laughs> I finally finished it. It turns out I was only, like, two levels away. So it really didn't take that long to do. Oh, you know what I should do? I should finish up what I was doing with that Warhammer exercise. I kind of left that in the lurch. Right, so, um, just for fun, because I kind of just want to have a fun, I'm probably going to jump around a bit today, uh, just knock out some different things, uh, keep myself on my toes, you know, keep, like, uh, moving forward with different things, but, uh, yeah, so this was an exercise I came up with last week, uh, that didn't turn out too well, <laughs> so I had to do a lot of prep work, and I was super distracted, and just weirdness. And you know how it is. So uh, I'd like to get back to this a bit, because mostly just because I didn't do a whole bunch of the creative aspects. I mostly just did bookkeeping stuff, and that's no fun. Uh, so I didn't really get to show kind of what I was trying to go for with the exercise itself. Uh, so yeah. Really what I wanted to demonstrate here was... Uh, kind of take different concepts and blend them together and see what you come up with and, and use that as an exercise in creativity. Not so much that, um, I mean, a lot of what we do as writers is uh, appropriation in a lot of ways. That's not to say straight up copying, like say, take a space marine and just put them in your, in your story or something like that. But it's about, you know, what influences you because something influenced them, uh, which is what came before. You know, there's a, there's a whole lineage of influences all the way down. Uh, I talked about this a long, long time ago, uh, but I'm a huge fan of Stephen McCraney's uh, Brick by Brick 
the art of writing, and he wrote a really interesting article on uh, sort of artistic lineage. Uh, so, you know, find the people who inspire you, and then go find ins who inspired them, and figure out, you know, where kind of things happened, right? So we were talking last time, uh, we had these cool, like, Adeptus Arbites, who are basically like 40k Judge Dreads, so Space Marines, who are Judge Dreads, saying, well, you know, they're obviously influenced by Judge Dredd, right? So where did Judge Dredd came from? Well, Judge Dredd is from 2000 AD, which was a British science fiction uh, comic book uh, magazine, which still exists today, um, that, you know, came out in the 50s and has is, is, a, is a weekly and has over 2,000 issues and, and all that kind of stuff, you know? There's a lot going on there. Um, I really like, really, really like old 2000 AD. It's got, like, really cool stuff. Uh, there's this neat... Um, there's a really cool comic called Flesh, which was about time travelers who go back and hunt dinosaurs for meat for their uh, future cities. Um, there was one called uh, Vulcan about uh, England getting taken over by aliens, basically. Uh, there was this one called Mach 5, which was about a uh, sort of six... A uh, six billion dollar man sort of idea, a guy with like a, a crazy supercomputer in his brain. Um, what was that one called? There was one about a sports game, a future sports game. Something ball, blitz ball maybe? Is that what it was called? of stories um <laughs> no yeah no I'm just trying to remember what it was actually called I don't think it was called Blitzball uh Dan Dare was really good um I'm a huge fan like um Alan Moore actually got a start in uh in 2000 AD, uh, way back when. Oh, it was called Harlem Heroes. That's what it was called. It's called Arrow Ball. It's football, boxing, kung fu, and basketball all rolled into one <laughs> on jetpacks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, Alan Moore got his start in uh, 2000 AD, way back when, with... Uh, he wrote uh, D.R. and Quinch. He wrote The Ballad of Halo Jones, uh, all of which are really, really good, if, if you ask me. Um, I really like that stuff. There's Mach 1. And there's a lot of cool stuff that's come out of it, like Rogue Trooper and things like that, that... Um, are, are really big media sort of things nowadays. I have not read a lot of the newer stuff. I've mostly read the old, old stuff from the 70s, uh, which is the stuff I really like. Um, I think I have a copy of 2008 here. Don't I? I do. Where is it? I think I have one. Give me a sec. Check this out. <laughs> so this is a issue of 2080 I bought when I was in Ireland uh, a couple years back. Um, yeah, got it. 
Starts off first page. Judge Dredd. <laughs> Uh, you got your Slain, which is another big series that's been around for a while. Uh, Future Shocks, uh, which is a really neat... So Future Shocks are uh, four-page uh, stories with twist endings that they publish. And you ask, the interesting thing about getting into 2000 AD is you specifically have to write a Future Shock in order to get in with the company. Everyone starts with Future Shocks. <laughs> Astronium Dog. The other interesting thing to know is because this is a weekly comic, there were the like most of the stories are like five, six pages, but they run for like many, many issues. Um, so is that. Also have a copy of Judge Dread magazine, which is a uh, sort of the companion one to them. I haven't even opened this. Got some sort of cool like mini mag in the back. You can see it there. It's like this thing here. So yeah. Who wrote this? Just trying to see if there's any notable names in here. I don't think so. Pat Mills is kind of known, but no one's super special. So there you have it. 2080. Yeah, so if I go back to my screen here, you'll see right here. Uh, Training Ground Aspiring Writers, both Alan Moore and Grant Morrison started in this comic. Writing Future Shocks. Oh yeah, and that's the other thing. A lot of really cool artists came out of it too. Uh, so people like, uh, uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, here we go, famous creators. Yeah, so uh, people like uh, Kevin O'Neill and uh, uh, who else is here that I know? Brian Boland, I'm a huge fan of. He did uh, Batman the Killing Joke, uh, among other things. Garth Ennis, that's a really cool guy. Steve Dillon's a great artist. Dave Gibbons, the guy who drew Watchmen. Uh, Ian Gibson's cool. Um, oh yeah, Neil Gaiman did some stuff back in the day. <laughs> Mark Miller. Yeah. Two thousand eleven issues, fifty eight specials, thirty six annuals. introduction to the history of British comics. Group. So 
got some elves, we got some dwarves. Got some ogre mercs, some some drakes. So what we got? We got cool. So we got some elves, dwarves, ogres. Well, for example, if we look at the dwarfs from Warhammer, right, they're very heavily based on the Lord of the Rings uh, dwarves.
So what do we got in here? Got a Thousand Suns, Praetorian Guard. Tomb Kings. Terex Guard. Sam, why have we never played uh, any of the Warhammer RPGs? Why did that never happen? <laughs> I feel like that's a thing that we would be very into. That might be cool. It's also interesting because it says it's directly compatible with uh, Dark Heresy. <laughs> yeah uh, Death Watch is also compatible I guess the so as far as I understand it uh, the only one that's kind of unique or the only one that doesn't explicitly say oh never mind they're all compatible sweet that's nice I like that yeah I assume that they have some sort of way of balancing it though I don't know.
Yeah, I, I, I get that.
Okay, I got a good one for this. Um, I would take a few minute break. Uh, about ten minutes. I will see you all in a bit. I've been going for like about an hour ten. So yeah, uh, I'll see you all in a bit.